Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today, Holy Mother, the Church, opens her most solemn season of Lent, the formal and solemn season for doing serious penances. And the church starts, which one could consider a very strange ritual at first sight. There is ashes burned in the fire, produced by the palms of last year's Palm Sunday, that is Holy Week. And of course, this brings us to, one could call it, the climax of Lent, which is Holy Week. It is the thought, the consideration of our Lord's passion and death on the cross. Ashes or dust is imposed upon our head. One could call it a strange ritual to put ashes on our heads. Memento homo, the priest says, remember man that thou art dust and unto dust thou shalt return. This very idea of dust reminds us of the first man, which is Adam, in paradise, in Genesis. The first, Ad, the first man being created not in a mere natural state. It is extremely important to understand these days. Because there are so many agents in our world and even in the so-called Catholic Church, beginning with Francis, who want to interpret everything according to the natural state of man. But Adam was created in a supernatural order not just body and soul, which is common to every man, but created as an intimate friend of God in the state of sanctifying grace, which is a participation of the inner divine life of the Holy Trinity. That's why the Apostle tells us that we are temples of the Holy Ghost. And he was created in the state of sanctifying grace with the gifts of the Holy Ghost, with the virtues, and he possessed many other preternatural and natural gifts the freedom from concupiscence, that is, the inclination to sin. He was free of sickness. He was free of death. He had infused knowledge. And then he sinned at the instigation of Satan and by means of Eve, disobeying the very express commandment of Almighty God. And many of those gifts he lost, and he lost it for everyone. And as perhaps the most dangerous and most 
manifested punishment. Here he and Eve experience death. What a sight for Adam and Eve after they are driven out of paradise to see their own son dead. They never had seen before the manifestations of death that suddenly there's a human being laying on the ground, lifeless, without any life dead. As a direct consequence of their sin. But more so is the punishment of losing sanctifying grace, losing this participation in the supernatural world. And so this very sacramental of this morning, the blessing of the ashes and the imposition of the ashes on our head, reminds us of this reality, a reality which most of the people are ignorant, indifferent, even denying that the reality and the effects of original sin and personal sin. Today we are vividly reminded by just looking what ashes are, dust, that there is death. And death is to us unnatural. That's why we feel pain when we die. And that's why we feel pain in our heart when some beloved of ours is dead. It reminds us of this very incident in paradise, original sin, and everything what follows from that sin of Adam. Today on Ash Wednesday, the church calls us by this very odd name, dust. Remember, man, that thou art dust. That is our reality, our body, which we cherish in this life, will be nothing than dust. After a while in the grave, what will be left of our body? Only a few bones and dust. And the church reminds us of this reality, that the hour and the day will come after 70, 80 years or earlier, that we will experience the consequence of sin, which is death. And if we shall die without having atoned for sin, personal sin, if we shall die without repentance, if we just think, all these violations of the commandments of God will be nothing in the eyes of God and we will just go to heaven, we will be deceived. And the church, as a wise mother, wants to remind us of this reality. 
the reality of death and the seriousness of our human life. Life is not a continuous party, a feast. Every single second, every single minute of your life has value for eternity. If this life is spent in sin, in pleasure, in inordinate attachment, and if we do not do penance, will not go to heaven. But if we spend our time well, just, re just think of the value of time. One moment, this very moment of the sermon, will never return ever again. Once it's past, and so every moment which is past will never return. It is history written in the book of life, waiting for a particular judgment. The church today reminds us, remember man, that thou art dust. That is, in a sense, your destiny. And unto dust thou shalt return, whether we deny this reality or whether we believe and accept it. It is a reality. The practice of imposing ashes on our head, of course, comes from the Old Testament. This is the well-known passage of the prophet of jo prophecy of Jonas, when it says, And the man of Nineveh believed in God, meaning that he would punish them, and they proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least. And the word came to the king of Nineveh, and he rose up out of his throne and cast away his robe from him and was clothed in sackcloth and sat in ashes. What's the meaning of this? Next, the reminder of death. It is the idea of prostration of bidding the dust of the air and the beard not only humble to the earth, but trampled upon and defiled. It became the very symbol of penance. That is why the church blesses today ashes, to elevate this remains of earthly material to make out of these ashes a salutary sacramental of penance. But what is penance? Penance is a virtue. Penance must not be confused with the works of penance, what is also called mortification. Penance and the virtue of penance is an interior disposition, a disposition of return to God, of conversion, the acknowledgement that I have sinned, the acknowledgement that I have done wrong, the acknowledgement that I have broken the law of God and that I'm contrite for it, that I have contrition on account of God himself, of the majesty of God, whom I have offended. In penance, we do for our own sin. Reparation, we do 
for others. And during this very season of Lent, we want to combine both of them, doing penance, bewailing our own sin in the sight of Almighty God, and doing reparation for the sins, perhaps of your relatives, friends, of this nation, yes, indeed, of the entire world. Our Blessed Lady, especially at the message of Fatima, has warned mankind that the time of punishment will come. One could call it, when we look into our world of ours, that we already have been punished, but most of the people do not realize how we have been punished. The organized teaching of errors by the perceived authority of the Catholic Church is, one could call it, a spiritual chastisement, a spiritual punishment. How can it be otherwise? If the faith, the true Catholic faith, seems to be eclipsed in the world of ours, contaminated with so many errors, not just of the theological nature, but sins and errors taught against the very natural order of God. So when it comes to penance and reparation, we should take the words of our Blessed Lady at Fatima very serious, that many souls will go to hell if no one prays for them, who sacrifices for them. And then there is always the impending exterior punishment of sin, temple punishment. This is a concept which modern man will not accept. The Novus Ordo Church has removed this idea that from at times God will send temple chastisement for the purgation of the human race for those sins. This is a reality. And if we look into our world, if we look at these various and grave sins, and not just only personal sins, organized sins, propagated sins, sins against nature. The non-acknowledgement of two genders, and by doing so, slapping God in the faith. Because God has created us as men and women, and not four or twenty genders, two genders. What a slap in the faith of the Creator. But ultimately, the cause of all of this is liberalism. Modern man is unwilling to bow their proudful head before God to that extent that they will not even bow anymore before the dictates of nature. And if we look in the political world of ours, if we look at these various wars in the Ukraine, in Israel and so forth, we have all reason to do serious penances. Take to heart again the words of our Blessed Lady, the very message of Fatima. At Lourdes, she called 
three times for penance, 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 penance. What would she say today? And if we do not do penance, if we do not live a life of reparation, it's the most important life these days. That is to say that you do more than what is necessary for yourself. That you do reparation for the sins of others by voluntary acts of penance. If we do so, we do a great service to humanity. Because the day will come when God will even externally punish the world. Our Blessed Lady has said this so, so many times in the past 200, 250 years. Repeating what the Gospel says and what the Church teaches. And so therefore, we should take the admonition of the Church today for these 40 days of the solemn penances very serious. We should spend this time in serious penances, in increasing our spiritual life, our relationship with God, our relationship with the Blessed Virgin, our relationship with the saints and the angels. Take serious the faith. Change what has to be changed and most importantly, doing penances, not just for us, doing works of mortification, works of reparation, for those who do not do penances whatsoever during this season of Lent. As a precondition that God will bless us, God will give us many more graces, and most importantly, will bless not just us, our families, but also this very nation and the entire human race. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.